Okay, so now we're going to have a iodomethyl cyclopentane, and we're going to react this with ethanol and heat. Remember, yesterday I talked about how ETOH is the abbreviation for ethanol, with ET being the abbreviation for ethyl, CH2, CH3. This is a weak nucleophile, this is an alkyl halide, it's a tertiary alkyl halide which can only be an SN1 or a, or a, a, a first order reaction. You can't do SN2 with tertiary, you can't do SN2 with ethanol or any alcohol. So we're going to start this by forming a carbocation. And as we form this carbocation, we're going to realize anytime we're making carbocations, we're doing SN1 and E1 simultaneously. There's our carbocation and it's tertiary, which means we don't even want to mess with it. We're not going to rearrange it. It's totally stable the way that it is. And we are going to do substitution. Let's go ahead and draw the substitution product first. Remember that the lone pair of electrons and the ethanol are going to attack the carbocation and attach and make a high energy transition state with this structure. Positive charge on the oxygen, which is unpleasant, and that gets resolved with a second ethanol molecule. The lone pair of electrons on the oxygen will pull off that proton and move the oxygen-hydrogen bonds back onto the oxygen as a lone pair and we get our SN1, our one and only SN1 product. Right there. Now, and again, every time you do SN1, you need to also do E1. So then we go back to our carbocation, or in the above example, our carbocations, and eliminate from them. To eliminate, to do the elimination, remember we can pull hydrogens off of adjacent carbon. So here's our carbocation, and we have adjacent hydrogen atoms here and here. We also have two up here, but they are equivalent as these. They're exactly the same as these, so we're not going to draw them in. And we also have hydrogen atoms out here. So if we eliminate, we're not going to draw this mechanism again. We've drawn enough of them. If we eliminate one of these hydrogens we end up with this alkene, from, again from eliminating one of these guys. If we eliminate one of these hydrogens, we put the double bond right here, and we get that product. Of these two, we want to identify the major and the minor the major E1 and the minor E1, and again it has to do with how many R groups are on your alkene. This alkene has one, two, three, this alkene has one, two, so this is the major E1, this is the minor E1, and this other one is the SN1 product. There's one more example that I want to do for you with the elimination reactions. And this one is actually just an example of a really funky um, alkyl shift. So let's say that we had this alkyl halide, which is actually a primary alkyl halide. If we react it with ethanol and heat, your first thoughts might be, well, this can't do any first order reactions because it's primary alkyl halide and that doesn't fly. But what happens is you actually can make this do a first order reaction. When you knock off the leaving group, you form very temporarily, so I'm going to bracket it, this carbocation that's just a nightmare. And that is an unbelievably unstable carbocation, but it can do a ring opening alkyl shift where you actually move this alkyl group 
to the carbocation. So we're going to draw it kind of like that. And it's really hard to see exactly how it goes down until you see the product. I end up with this carbo a carbocation that looks like that big ring. If this is carbon number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five, you end up with, uh, probably that would be one, two, three, four, five. Five-membered ring. And that can go on to do substitution. or elimination. And this is the end of sections 618 and 617, and it's also the end of E1. You are supposed to be writing your own study questions and your own summaries right now at this point, so take some time to go back and write those. You want to write something that's going to help you remember to do E1 and SN1 simultaneously. Uh, you definitely want some study questions about Zaysef's role in there. And then also make sure that you have a good summary for this content. And in the last little bit of chapter six, we're gonna study the E2 mechanism.